What is up again, everybody? It is me, Don Horatio, back with some more DreamHack action. This is game two of the round of 16 series between Acer's Bly and Liquid Teja. Teja took game one on Ohana, uh, holding off the aggression at both the early and mid game from his Zerg opponent, uh, Bly. So well done by Teja to take game number one. Game number two will be on Cloud Kingdom. And let's just see what these two players can bring to the table in this game. Uh, in the bottom left, we have the Red Zerg for Team Acer, a team of all Zergs. It is none other than the Ukrainian player, Bly. And in the top right, we have Liquid's own Teja, the basically Terran superstar of win every tournament ever because he's just really good. So, uh, game one, like I said, Teja took it. So, Bly will be looking to bounce back in this game, too. Uh, I'm going to actually tell you a little bit about Bly uh, in the meantime. Actually, first thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm sorry for not putting this... Uh, panel up at the top in the first match I realized I mean game I realized that I did not put that up there and that is a good place to look for supply and I apologize for that anyway not that important but what is important is that Bly is actually really good at uh, Starcraft obviously we made it to the round of 16 uh, making it through two dreamhack uh, open stages certainly not a feat to just kind of let go by the wayside Bly has done quite well in this tournament and uh, he's just really good he's really really good um He's a bit overshadowed on Team Acer uh, due to the presence of the North American, just absolutely great North American Zerg player, Scarlet, who's obviously really shown how good she is in the uh, WCS and such things. As we do see another, actually, uh, proxy racks out there for Teja, another uh, similar sort of thing as did last game. But uh, back to Bly for a second, as he sends out his scouting drone. He is, um, and he's also overshadowed by Nurchio, the other uh, very, very good Zerg player on Acer, uh, along with Scarlet. So, uh, three very good Zerg players on that team, and also the other two players on the team, uh, Paranoid, uh, a former uh, Brood War legend, all pretty much from uh, Poland, a very good player, has Blyda scout that proxy barracks. As well as, uh, who's the f who's the fifth person? Uh, Dark Hydra, who used to, be, who used to play Terran, which didn't make any sense, because he had Hydra in his name. But he does play Zerg now, which makes a lot more sense. So Dark Hydra is also on the team. They're all Zerg players. So Acer is Zerg, 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 Zerg. They have some interesting clan wars to watch because they have a lot of Zergs. Fly continuing to scout around with this drone. Tanger will just look to do the same thing as did last game with that one barracks expansion. Already having those minerals stack up once again. And Fly once again doing nothing too dissimilar. Going with that hatchery and then spawning pool. No early gases as of yet. So both players look to be doing pretty much the same way. Um, the same way they started last game. Um, I would be interested to see if Bly decides to go for that same um, sort of maneuver he went with. Where he uh, made those a couple of extra zerglings at the beginning to try and just put on some light pressure. And it didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, drones probably would have been better. But I mean it's worth a shot every once in a while. You kind of have to take risks and go for something kind of a bit out of the ordinary to take down someone who's... Someone is just as good as Teja is right now. He is absolutely just absurd. You need to kind of take every trick out of your bag to try and really do damage to a player like that. We do see Bly going for multiple queens to start with, uh, making one at each of his hatcheries. Going to be looking to pump those out as often as possible. Going to get four or six up to aid with creep spread and macro and just general defense as well. We do see that same uh, large group of Zerglings for Bly. He will look to put on that same kind of pressure... He finds himself a touch overlord block, but he'll fix that in a moment, uh, right when those two queens finish. Dropping down a couple of gases as well, looking very similar to last game. The same build almost to the T. And let's just see what these Zerglings can do this time. Let's take a look at Tage's defenses. Uh, he actually will almost have a bunker up, and he will have this bunker up before the Zerglings can even get there. So this will be even less effective than last time. And Bly is going to have just kind of like a bit of a heartbreak when he sees this. Um, let's see what he decides with these Zerglings. Might try to split them up and get some into the main, but uh, with that bunker there, it's going to be really hard. Gonna try and maybe take out a SCV or two, but Teja can just pull back and uh, pull those SCVs into the main. And will move out here to try and deal with these Zerglings with the Marines. And Bly just can't be feeling too good about this right now. This this investment into the Zerglings, into the Zerglings was completely wasted. And he's going to fall back in. He's already immediately behind. And against a player of Teja's caliber, you cannot afford things like that. And But looks like he might, is he going to try and sneak into the main? And he is. The bunker is empty. So he will get in and get a good scout off. But he'll just see just standard tear and play it's not like he's really discovering anything too mind-blowing does he the two gas uh does not reveal too much that's a standard follow-up to any sort to a uh, one barracks expand into the reactor hellions 
And just going to try maybe pick off a SCV or two and don't even get one. It does not look like he did. Not a single worker killed by um, by those wings at all. And Teja already finds himself ahead on even base count. But we do have the Roach Ward once again, once again going down early for Bly. And he's once again just going to kind of fall back on this Roach aggression. He just does not feel he can take Teja in a straight up macro game. And we'll see if he tries to attack earlier than he did in the previous match where he found himself a bit unprepared for the... Um, to attack that third base and did take out a number of SCVs but did not get the base. And Tage is doing just this, he's kind of doing the same build he did last time. In fact, it's the exact same one, uh, pretty much. That third command center going down pretty early. Uh, before the third hatch of uh, Bly is even, well, the third hatch of Bly is never going to go down, quite frankly, as he had like 13 roaches on the way right there. And I mean, Tage could be a bit susceptible to this. He obviously had that uh, command center going down and the Marines are out on the map and not at home to defend, but the Hellions will spot this. And we'll have to see what the Marines decide to do. Looks like they should just run home. But the Roaches will now move out across. And let's see what Teja has up in his base. Only the one bunker still. But he does cancel that supply depot at the front. Knowing that that will not last long. And here come the Roaches. I'd like to see another bunker attempt to be placed down here. And that's this. I feel like this has to be should try to do that. But no, Teja's going to trust that his defenses are good enough. And he is pretty close in supply. But a lot of that should be in SCVs. And there's they have 39 of them in the SCVs. So just four Hellions, a Marauder, and four Marines. And this roach is going to take down this barracks pretty easily, but with the repair and the marauder on the high ground, maybe could do a little bit of damage to these roaches. The bunker being pretty cost effective, but the roaches will try to move in now and do what they can. But the banshee uh, basically will kill all these roaches in time eventually, and they're going down one at a time. Let's see how many SCVs they can get. So let's keep an eye on the workers' kill tab. It's already at six, and right now he's going to get a couple more, and let's see what else he can do. But, um,. Banshee once again doing a good damage and the second one will come out and when that comes out these roaches will be pretty much as good as dead but a ton of workers still going down here and Teja finds himself down to 47 supply but at the same time oh I've been missing this the counterattack here with Hellions are roasting a bunch of drones and Teja himself has also killed 14 workers the roaches will push back these Hellions but a good little counterattack by Teja uh, putting him in a somewhat decent position and he's not as far behind as he might have been without that counterattack Third base is forced to lift off, and these roaches are almost dead here. The, a couple of uh, banshees will be cleaning them up. I'd like to see maybe a target on that stim research from those roaches uh, once they knew they were already going to die, but uh, does not go for that at that point in time. And Hellion still continuing to be pumped out. SCV is now building a wall here at the top of the ramp to deny more roaches coming in. But here comes some more lings and roaches to see what they can do, and a third hatch on the way as well. And Bly is trying to drone up behind this. Uh, droning up behind the aggression is always a good idea. Um... Basically, you have to counterattack in that situation and try and do anything. Banshee's just going to like basically force these roaches completely back, but these Zerklings will take the opportunity to come in the back door. Or maybe they'll just hang out there. Nope, there they go. Going to move in and see what they can do. Going to definitely pick off a couple SCVs, but the Hellions are actually in great position to pull uh, push them back. It's well done there, and a couple of good shots will uh, roast those uh, Zerklings and the Hellions, not the Hellions, the Banshees are in the back and just basically getting those roaches down. And a third Banshee as well, and these roaches will be DPS down very quickly. Zerglings can get next to nothing done, not adding many workers killed there with that attack at all. And, I mean, Bly finds himself a good 20 supply behind Teja, and basically, he's in a really rough spot. There's a lot of weak SCVs, but weak SCVs still mine at full capacity. And here come the Hellions of Banshees, and frankly, there is not a lot at home to stop this. A spore Caller is going up, but uh, that just may not be enough. And the third base was forced to cancel over here uh, by Teja, so, I mean... Teja is in complete control of this game, and when these uh, Banshees move in, and with the Hellions, there's just nothing here to help. Uh, very susceptible Hellions right now, just a bunch of Zerglings, but a couple of good blasts from those Hellions will make them, basically, well, they'll make them dead. That's what they'll be. They'll just be dead, dead, dead Zerglings, but... Teja will be playing this patiently, and now he decides to move in, and here comes a bunch of Hellions, and there's, once again, as I said, nothing to stop this. Banshees doing what they can to come in and try to do some damage. And maybe try to focus on these queens, and they will do exactly that. That'll make the Hellions even more effective. Now there's nothing to stop the Hellions at all. Nothing here, and a blast on the roaches. Uh, good little drones surround there. Actually going to minimize the damage taken, uh, really kind of reducing that. But even so, there were eight Hellions there, and the workers killed has jumped up to 23. Almost tied in that workers kill tab, and he's still on even base count with his Zerg opponent. Tage is still in fantastic shape. The Hellions just having free reign over any units that uh, leave the creep because the Queens really can't get off creep and do any damage or defense. But looking to focus on one of these Banshees perhaps and we'll almost get it. And he will actually get one Banshee. It's a good little win there for Bly. Good first step trying to get back into this. 
but at the same time, we have Tage at home is actually going for mech play. We have a couple fact. No, not mech play. Hold on. No, he's just going to buy him. He's dropping down two factories. So it'll be just a uh, marine tank. I saw those two factories building. He's got a lot of factories, actually. It might even be marine. It, it should still be marine tank, but three factories and three barracks can be a very interesting composition. Uh, curious to see what he decides to do with this. Uh, Stim is now done. Combat shield on the way for Teja as he moves out to try and secure this third base location. And with this number of roaches, he should be able to do that for a fair bit of time. The Banshee is still going to be very, very annoying and going to deny this creep spread uh, pretty effectively. Evo Chamber is only just now coming down. Well, not only just now coming down. The second one only just now coming down uh, for double upgrades for Bly. And his layer's done as well, by the way. So he does have the ability to tech. Uh, he's going for that roach speed, so we're going for a roach-based composition. And against the Hellions that he's uh, been continuing to see from from Teja, that's not a bad thing to do at all. And here do come the tanks, uh, Siege Motor on the way. Hellions continue to be produced as well, though, as well as the tanks. So a very interesting composition coming up here, uh, Hellion Marine tank. Or is he going to be going Marauders? Oh, it is Marauders. Yeah, he knows that um, his opponent's going up here, Roach, to really try and counter this mech play. So a Marauder tank ball, actually, is going to be what's coming up here. Uh, you don't see that every day. So that would be really, really good against Roaches, though, for absolutely sure. Uh, without a tech switch over to Zerglings here in the near future, which I don't see happening with the plus one missile upgrade and road speed on the way. Uh, he's in great shape going forward. Spire on the way, going to try and uh, use Mutas to try and defend here, and frankly, Mutas would kill everything that Teja has, but it's a matter of not dying before that happens. Uh, this third base will likely be forced to cancel again. There's no Queens over here to defend this, and the Hellions can also add some additional damage. And this third base will not be able to get off the ground, and Teja doesn't need to kill Bly anytime soon. He's ahead in supply, and he's strangling the economy. It's in a complete, complete stranglehold. Bly really, he, without this extra gas, he cannot, he cannot make any distinct amount of lair tech units, and Tay just continues to find himself more and more ahead. Moving out, taking, making four and fifth, fourth and fifth command centers, making Thors and Hellions. This would be a Thor Hellion Marauder composition up here, with a couple of tanks to support, and, uh,. It's just, it's, it's just like a sort of Doom composition. Teja might go for a Thor drop here. That'd actually be sick. But uh, with the... Matter of fact, following the army like that, I'm going to guess that that might have been a mistake, actually, putting that Thor in there. But anyway, he'll be moving across the map with these Marauders, and there's just frankly not a whole lot to stop this Marauder Hellion composition. But there will be nine Mutas. This Thor will be key in stopping them for absolutely sure. And we'll have to see. Uh, Thor does get a shot off on that <laughs> Overlord, so... Um... Bly will know what's up here. Do come the mule list, and they need to be very careful engaging against this Thor. And yeah, let's see if they just try to magic box, but oh, a, S, a mule will come in, and that will repair the Thor. And that means the mules will do next to nothing, and they'll just fall. And does, here comes the main body, the army of Teja, just absolutely wrecking through the Queens and Roaches at the front. The Hellion's not doing a whole lot, but they are buffering damage, while the Marauders and Tank do absolutely good work, and all these Queens will absolutely fall. And the second base will likely get focused down as well in half a second here, and there it does go. Marauders take that building so, 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 so fast. The Thor now coming in to try and get more splash damage off from those Mutas. And another Hellion dropping down, but it may not be in time to save this Thor. And there's the repair. Will it be in time? Oh, not quite enough. So the Hellions will, I mean, the Mutas will be able to clean up here eventually, but that natural is gone. And that was a lot of the mining, and a lot of drones will go down here as well. Marauders going to move up into the main base to do any additional amount of damage. And this Spire might also go down as well, and it will, it will be focused down. Well, let's see if the units can save it in time, and it looks like they will, actually. They do take down those Marauders, but Bly, I mean, there's really no no way out of this right now. Um, Tage is on three bases, uh, saturating them, in the, in the, either saturated or in the uh, process of saturating, saturating them all. Two, two upgrades on the way for his mech units. Uh, Thor's on the way. And Blue Flame, is that Blue Flame? No, yeah. No, he's, oh, he's also getting the Bio Plus 2 upgrades. He's just getting all the upgrades in the book. And his armies will be very, very strong. And just Bly has no way to macro right now. He does not have the economy or the production uh, buildings required to do so. And he's, he's in a rough spot. And Teja could just move out across the map here with a couple more Thors and probably just end the game. And at least look to deny that third base again. That scan will not save you now. Uh, Marines doing good work on the Mutas. Medivacs and Marines are a good combination against Mutalisk Flock. Uh, Mutalisk Flock, sorry. And Tage is once again going to force everything back, and he will look to move in once again and try to basically end this game. Uh, maybe a couple of Thors would help in doing that, but it looks like they're going to stay kind of at home and help defend. A little counterattack attempt here with a couple of Zerlings just to see what they can do. And, uh, I mean, 
Well, Blige's just in bad shape, and Tage is just basically dominating this series. Blige trying to go for early aggression and being denied in both games. And it's unfortunate. I would like to see him maybe try to go for a more straight-up game and try to defend a bit. And uh, just... He didn't, he didn't really get a, get a chance to show how good he is. Um, and there's the GG. So I think it's fair to say that uh, Teja was definitely significantly intimidated. Not Teja. Teja's never intimidated. He doesn't care about these sort of things. He's the best Terran in the world. Uh, but Bly was definitely intimidated by by just how good Teja is. I mean, you don't... I mean, he went with a very similar sort of mid-game Roach aggression that kind of really had to do a ton of damage for there to be any chance of him to make a play in the game. And he just did not give himself a chance to play Macro. I would like to see that. He's a very, very solid Zerg player, and I, I promise you he's quite, quite good. But uh, hard to show that against Teja. So GG well played, like Bly said. To Teja, Teja will move on to the round of eight, where she eventually moves on through everything and kills everybody and takes the tournament. But Bly will have to settle for this uh, round of 16 finish, which is actually quite, quite good for him. This DreamHack opens have intense levels of competition. So it was actually an excellent job for Bly to make it this far. And so grats to both players and grats to Liquid Teja. Thank you guys for watching uh, my first cast that I put up in quite some time. I uh, hope you enjoyed them. And I'll bring you back more soon. My throat's still kind of... If you watch my state of the channel address that I did, um, I mentioned that I have a bit of a cold and a sore throat thing. The sore throat's definitely still bothering me. And I'm probably definitely done for tonight. Um, but yeah. So thank you all for watching. And stay tuned for more casting. And please let me know if you have any feedback. Uh, tweet at me, Don Horatio. And yeah. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you later.